Uh, good to see you. Happy Thanksgiving week to everybody. Um, Michigan game uh, last week, some uh, defensively, some guys we thought played well. It was a tough, you know, tough game. Guys really battled a couple plays. I think they had three plays offensively. It got us the QB scramble and the two runs by the running back. You know, offensively, we had two drives, and that was tough sledding. Thought our kids really battled and played hard. And that was evident. Again, you watch the tape. Uh, got to find a way to make some more plays, but uh, it, was, it, was, it was appreciate their, their fight, the confidence they played with. They battled really, really, really hard. I think the, the drive at the end of the game, we had two penalties there. We, we would have had them, I think, third and seven on the late hit. We had a 16-play drive in the fourth quarter. That uh, The way we managed the end of the third quarter on our one drive, and then that drive was kind of the difference in the, what closed it off. Um, defensively, Nate Hoff played very, very well. Uh, five tackles and three assists, very active. Uh, same with Patrick Dockerty, who had two tackles and four assists. Both those guys had one and a half tackles for loss. Uh, T. Gray Scales had another solid game, 13 total tackles, two tackles for loss. Marcelino Ball, uh, statistically his best game uh, as far as just grading out. Uh, he's going to continue to grow uh, with less uh, error. Only had two tackles and one quarterback hurry. Um, didn't get a lot of action, but, um, but really played well. And, and same with Richard Fant, who had three tackles. Those two didn't get a lot of work as far as the ball getting away, but were very solid all game. Uh, offensively, really had no one up front, tight end, running back. Those guys were stressed and challenged all day. The two guys we thought played well were two outside receivers, Westbrook, who had four catches for 78, and Rick Jones, four for 40. With those guys graded 90 percentile in their, in their performance grades, they did well. Um, our... Special teams, there wasn't a lot of action. Our punt team wasn't very good. I think we had, we had two blocks that led to three points. The defense did a nice job of after those of responding, and uh, they only uh, didn't hurt us except for three points. Kickoff return didn't get much because they were all out. Same with punt return. Um, our field goal, I thought Oaks was really good a couple weeks in a row. Uh, appreciate his efforts and, 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 and the way he played. Players of the game, offensively was Westbrook. Defensively, Nate Hoff. Special team player was Griffin Oaks. And our attack look, Peyton Ramsey, a um, uh, couple of our other skill guys, Barry and Ken, had three guys offensively, some of our scout team guys, our walk-on guys. And then uh, Wes Green and Thomas Henderson were our defensive scouts of the week. Um, so, again, tough battle. Uh, guys played really, really hard. Had a good week. Our scouts last week were also, I know, going into that game, Coach uh, Allen was a very, very complimentary of our offensive scouts. And we're playing a team that played multiple tight ends, in different personnel settings and things that sometimes you don't see as much and just very complimentary to those guys. And I think it's evident by the way the kids played. It's one thing for, for those guys to go out and execute the plan and, some, and for them to perform well, but also to get the look. So, again, those scout team guys have been, been, been really good. We've had some good, strong efforts. Two weeks ago, had some turnovers that got us this game here, playing a really good team and a couple minor errors. But guys have battled hard. we got another strong test uh, here this week, uh, playing a rival. Um, uh, that, um, again, offensively has played very well and putting up numbers, uh, number one in the conference in passing, quarterbacks making all the throws. David Blau's extremely talented, great arm, quick arm. Uh, Yancey, their big receiver, uh, statistically, in the plays he makes at 155 against Wisconsin the other day, ran by those guys, and Wisconsin's playing about as good a defense as there is in the country. Um, you look at their... Outings, the last few outings, uh, they've uh, had Wisconsin in the first quarter last week, 3 nothing. Second quarter got away at Northwestern, it's 14-10 at half. They've got the lead at Minnesota, 28-23. They're tied up with Penn State, 17-17 at the half. They have the, the lead at Nebraska, 14-10. So the last five games they've came out, and uh, uh, Coach Parker's got those guys playing hard and they're making some plays on offense. And then you've seen us play enough that we've had turnover issues and we've had the ability to leave points on the board. So we're expecting a, a great challenge. We're going to have what we told our team our best week. We're off to a good start and you know, we've battled. We're just now about nine weeks in a row, whatever, 10 weeks in a row with, without an open date. But we're, uh, again, healthy coming out of the last game, practicing you know, pretty good, uh, playing good, not quite good enough all the time. Uh, but we're going to need a good week uh, because anytime you play the rival game end of the year, there's always a lot of juice and energy uh, from both sides. It's going to be a physical game. 
Uh, it's going to be a tough game. That's, and, and to me, like we told our team last night, we're very, very fortunate to have this game and, and to have a strong, great rival because there's a lot of programs and schools that don't have this chance. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to play the game. And with a lot of respect, we, we look forward to having a good week. We'll need one. Questions? Too early, I think, like really big picture, but Coy has pretty much entrenched himself there at left tackle. You've talked before about how you think he's probably one of the best freshmen in his position in the country. Just how do you kind of evaluate, especially you get deep into the season, how well he's done at a position with that kind of pressure? Good question, because he could be significantly better just with fundamentals. You know, he's, he's learned to play at a high level uh, against some of the um, – I think the third lean tackle on Purdue's teams, their defensive end. And every week when you're going against the guys in the Big Ten bracket and in the Big Ten East, you're playing against some, some stout guys, and we're going to throw it a lot. And he plays one of those positions where, you know, you're on the island. Like I said before, if you, you know, center and guard, you're always helping each other. That tackle's got a lot of one-on-one -on -one blocks. Once in a while, there's a little tight end help. Once in a while, there's some guard help. But, but he's out there exposed a lot. And sometimes the differential in athletic mismatch, Zach's pretty strong. That guy's a little bit quicker, more athletic than me, blah, blah, blah. Coy's a very good athlete. I've been extremely impressed with just his toughness. He's a competitive, I mean, you know, his dad's an old coach here and his mom's an educator. And, you know, he's been raised where he, he's a tough, he's a bat, he battles. His fundamentals could be so much better. He's learning how to play. He's kind of a high school linebacker, kind of running around just as big athlete. He's got a lot of upside on fundamentals, but if he continues to polish with his skill set, and gets stronger and matures and really learns the craft of being a college tackle, he, he's got a chance to be another good offensive lineman for us. He's had a great freshman year. And, he, and like I say, you don't get a lot of help, and it's sink or swim. And psychologically, we talk about a lot of kids on our team that struggle psychologically as they're going things. That, that's a position where psychologically, you know, there's, there's a lot going on out there. And for him to handle that as a, as a young kid, it's, um, it's pr pretty neat. Like I say, same deal with Ashawn Riggins playing corner. And same thoughts out there with Marcelino. Those three guys are playing positions where they get on an island and they've all, for freshmen, have, have handled it. Very proud of them. They've handled it very, very strong. Well, again, all those are into the wind now. And we didn't manage the one right before. We, we, we ran the ball so poorly in the third quarter. Well, we had one good run had a holding penalty on third and 10 and popped one. The first drive, we ran the ball, took a deep ball shot, ran it on third and long, and Devine made a great little run against the blitz. You know, we caught him in something that we thought would have a chance, and we got called for a perimeter hold on one of our receivers. Um, but after that, the rest of the, 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 the half, we didn't run the ball. And, uh, you know, we, uh, I think there's low, low minutes left in the, in the third quarter, and we came out in the first round. We had a high percentage throw we thought we could execute because we needed to get a first down. And I think punting one more time in the win was one of the differences in the game, which we didn't want to do. But we thought we had a high percentage pass that we had hit earlier in the game to Ricky Jones, and we felt pretty confident we could hit it. And we needed, and we were backed up. You know, uh, should we start it out? You know, we spent the whole first half, we spent the whole third quarter on Iron Finn, but we're going into the win. So the one thing that helped the punt team is, when your offense runs for 55 yards and they run for 220 yards, there's the difference in the game. Because when you're going against the win, you got to be tough enough to punch it out. So we needed to flip the, the field position, and we didn't. And uh, quite honestly, we're very fortunate that they didn't get more. I think the one drive on the one-yard line, we had a go ball to Nick Westbrook coming out and, and flipped it. Uh, our two drives were both long drives into the win where we scored our 10 points because we're really lucky if we didn't make those plays, it could have even snowballed and been worse. So now punt team, we had – two errors where two guys basically just missed an assignment and we cut a guy clean and it's not very confusing on who we got ABC you know who you got and we had some guys just make some mental errors trying to help a guy and not do their job so that was where the pump blocks were and in punting in the win no one was going to kick good in that win that's why we squib, we squib kicked it on our kickoffs so a little bit of the win but the offense was is a little bit of the Achilles when you don't you know uh, run the ball well in late in November and in the Big Ten games, it's, it's just hard to have some success. And that comes back to the finding a run game. Your seniors have a chance to win the bucket for the fourth time. Can you just talk about the seniors as a group and what, what they've meant to this program? 
Well, it's a good group. That's not a lot. I think last week they had 43 seniors up there. I think we got seven that are playing. And I don't, you know, um, some of these guys, there's always a, a fourth-year guy that may want to not play his fifth year. That's an option we give kids. Sometimes it's our thought you're not playing a lot. Sometimes it's their thought. You know, some of these guys, the, the wear and tear on your body and the year-round commitment uh, to, to play some of those positions is, is, is pretty gruesome. But um, academically, I know we've got, I think we've got seven mid-year graduates, maybe eight mid-year graduates that are graduating in December with our fifth-year guys. Uh, so proud of those guys from Demetri Camille, who hasn't played recently, and Ralph Green and Dan Feeney and Wes Rogers, Jacob Bailey, all those guys are, are mid-year graduates. And Mitchell Page, Ricky Jones, Dawson Fletcher, they're all mid-year graduates. So proud of those guys. That actually opens up recruiting spaces for mid-year if you want to put a walk-on on scholarship or bring in mid-year guys. We can't bring in mid-year guys if spaces aren't available. And the only way a space becomes available if is if a guy graduates. So we've, we've got some of those guys. Um, it's a good group. I mean, to me, you know, it doesn't seem, I mean, they've been such a pleasure to coach for the last couple of weeks. It doesn't seem, I, the weather's been awesome. Got cold here the last couple, three days, but uh, it hadn't seemed like November. It seems like it's October because it's a good group to, to coach. You don't feel like you're pulling teeth every day to get them going. So it's a great group. They've set a pretty good standard. Um, but as far as the game, we go back to it's, they, this is this week and it's this team and this week. And last year's team had success, or other teams have or haven't. But my thing and with these guys, we just come back to this week and the, 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 the game and the week of preparation. And not to be corny, but that's how we started with them yesterday. It's about this week. And uh, love them to death. It's a great group of guys. They're going to be very, very successful. We've had several strong classes in a row, I think, of great kids that are, that are helping us get there and uh, not where we want to be. I think we've got some guys that will have a chance maybe for NFL opportunities. Uh, matter of fact, I don't think it'll come out. Can I make that comment right now? Okay, but we'll have good news about one of our guys here within an hour, right? Three, okay, so we'll have a little accolade for one guy that's coming along. So there's some good things happening for guys. So it's a great, great group. Love them. Uh, but really, and, and not, we're not melancholy about like it's the end. Because to me, I, I enjoy coaching those guys so much. It's like, you know, I just talk about you want the season to continue and maintain the life of working together. And we went out today and we didn't talk a lot about seniors. We're talking about the best Monday we can have and the best prep we can have to have a great game and play well in, in our game against Purdue on Saturday. But Dan is obviously whatever happens, win or lose, he's playing his last game here on uh, Well, the other Saturday. guys too, though. What? The other guys too. Well, but you've talked a lot about Dan through his career. You, you've said he's one of the better players you've ever worked around. Just kind of how have you seen him grow, even in his final season, what he's had to go through, and what will it mean, I guess, to you to see him go off for that last one? Well, again, you want him to play well. And um, again, I appreciate, the, one, him having the confidence to come back. I think in talking to the scouts I've dealt with, and he dealt with a, an issue there that cost him a couple weeks of the season, but he's still rated, considered very, very high in the comments. Now, those aren't always the decision makers. It's the, the scouts that come through. But when I say compare him to this guy and this guy and this guy, they, they have very high regard for him. I think him playing uh, the tackle spot, coming back and playing well, shows, again, his durability, his flexibility. And... Um, I say I've, I've been lucky for 20 plus, 30 years, whatever it is, to, to have some decent linemen and some guys that, that, that had nice pro careers. And his, his college background, his college pedigree is as strong as any of those guys. He is a tremendous player. He is a better person. And he, he has all the intangibles that I think it takes to, to have been a great college player. And I think it sets up for him to have a chance to have a great pro career. We're going to finish this college thing really, really strong if we can. With Dan playing tackle, I saw Stepniak got some action at, at guard. Yeah. And, and, you know, and as you said, they can help him there a little bit. Any any guys, one of any young guys coming on for you in the line that you see? Well, again, we got Grayson Stover, McKenzie Noor being redshirted that we're high on. Uh, but and and Delroy and 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 Devondre Love, the two big tackles, I think are going to be solid for us. I think D Love's really coming on good. The um, um, uh, Stepniak playing the last game was pretty encouraging. Though. He had a great look in his eye. I mentioned that to Coach Fry. Just, he, you know, I think he got it there and was having some fun. Uh, I think, you know, we, we had him set up and slated, we thought, potentially to start. And, and they kind of had a sluggish preseason camp. And Jake Bailey being a veteran and, and, and uh, Wes Martin. And, Wes, we, you know, we actually at one time looked at, at Simon at center. And we very much expect him. So I think he's finishing good. And having been here two years, it's kind of good to see. We need him to come through. So uh, uh, he's been pretty solid. Let me think who else here. Uh, of course, Wes has been Brandon Knight. We think he's going to be a great player. 
Coy Cronk, we think he's got a chance to be a great player. I mean, there's some we'll, we'll need to recruit and get a little bit more to be too deep like we need to be. But I think we're going to throw seven, eight there out there. And the way we lift with Coach Caton, and I think Coach Fry and Coach Patton's background and, and a little bit of, of my background as a line guy, I think hopefully we can continue to develop those guys. It's a developmental position. Let's credit those kids up. Some good bodies and some some good DNA at work with just their mindset, the way they approach the process of playing college line. It's a tough job. Nah, we hadn't talked about that. Hadn't hadn't from since we started. Like we've never goal of we've got to be a bold team. Our goal is to beat play play as good as we can each week and see how we stack up and and um, uh, you know you know I statistically there are teams that are going with they have the bowl opportunity of five. So I mean we're not even you know just we, but we just we need a good week. This is a rival. It's a big week. We've gotten better each week down the stretch. We let a couple slip away. Um, you don't get every bounce and break. You know, and sometimes when you don't, you sit there and point fingers. You know, we blame our quarterback for picks, and now he's got, you know, a couple games of playing pretty good ball. You know, um, you know our kicker got a little awry. He's got a couple weeks in tough conditions back on track. You know, we've got several injuries. In the other. This team's battling, and this team's overcoming, and it's been playing good. And all we're talking about, man, we just want to have a fun, good week. And we're, we, you know, we just – it's not corny, but there's, to me there's just a way you go through practice. You've got to have talent. And you got to put together a game plan. You got to call plays and all that. But there's a way that you go through the week that gets your team ready, and we've we've been really really good at that. We've we've been a rock solid practice team for a while, and we're trying to etch that into being a a better game performance team. And we need to just have a great week and go out and play as well as we can and see where that stacks up. And that's kind of all. That's kind of all it is. I think sometimes too when you get melancholy. I think guys get have regrets. I don't, I don't, the way these guys practice go by, I don't think there's a lot of regrets. You know, you kind of sitting there, you know, you see people sometimes at funerals wailing and all that stuff. And I made a comment, you know, about a family show. I saw how strong they were at dealing with something. That's why, I, I mean, I, I think our team's pretty much at peace with itself. I think it's pretty strong. I think they respect, I know as coaches, we respect them. And I think they respect themselves and the way they go about their business. I think we're just at a different point of where we are in, in analyzing ourselves. And, you know, you, want to, you, you, you sure would like to have had a few more W's, but you sit there and look at it is what it is. And, you know, those mistakes or that play made it good or made it not good. But, again, we go into this week, I say it's uh, – we're, we're working as hard as we can to have another positive week. I know day practice was, was – it was a good day out there. We need to have a great week. The opportunity to do something when four straight bucket games, which has only been done once, how – Sure, maybe you don't, I don't know if you talked about that or not, but how significant would that be? Well, again, that'll, that's a story that you guys will talk. All we talked about was this team and this week because that, that's not this team's – somebody this week is going to earn that bucket, this team or, 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 or the rival. And that's all we talk about. Like, like that, that bucket's last year's. That's last year's. And now it's this year. And you, you, you've recruited – you have developed, you have practiced, you've played your season, and now you're into this game week. And now you have this game week and you go play this game. And you go about and see if, 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 you, if you can do what it takes to earn it. That's all we talk about. I guess contributed to Griffin getting in that funk a little bit midseason. What do you think as you talk about he's getting better these last couple weeks? What do you think has helped get him out of it, I guess? I don't know. Um, um, I mean, I, ask him. Um, I, I know from a coaching standpoint, we've been pretty confident that we know how good his leg is. I know he's dealt with a little bit of a, of a quad leg issue, a little, little muscle pull where, you know, sometimes, you know, and, you know, you're missing kicks, you want to kick more, and the more you kick, the, maybe the, you know, the weaker it becomes. There's a fine balance here. There's a fine line. So, um, you know, we didn't do a lot of kicking. Uh, we did go back with Mitchell at Holder. You know, I, I just tried to be a little bit more consistent with where the spot was, but um, – Credit to him. He, he's the only one that can get himself out of it. He's got to battle through it. And so, and short term he has, but, uh, you know, um, Fish's golf world back there had a great line, and I've, I've never forgot a long time ago from Crenshaw that golf is a game you never own. You just rent it from time to time. And I think that about kick, I mean, you know, you never own it, you know, and it's just the next kick. 
you know, and you're fighting and it's fleeting and it's, you know, like it went away and it's, it's a credit to the, some of those kids. I mean, they stand out there. I was, I was thinking the other day, you know, you know, it's kind of funny, you know, you sit here and look and you watch some of the media deals and, and we've been a part of it on the good side and the bad side, but where they take a college kid and then kind of mock him on the plays of the week, and kind of laugh at a kid, you know, that's a college kid. Like, come on, man, it's, you know, it's just a kid out there playing ball and that ball takes funny bounces and, you know, you know, and, and just, you know, it's, I was just about that today. Was going through, and not in personally because it, it bothered me about any of our guys. But you're just sitting there, and you got all these college kids, and all of a sudden we're ridiculing a guy for missing a slam dunk and airballing this, or you know, just you know, you know, you know, dropping the ball before he scored, and you know, at the same time it's still some kids. So, um, you know, it's, um, you know, like I say, you never own sports, and those are you know a bunch of good kids. I think it's a credit to to Griff to get where he is now and be be a sign of maturity. See if he can keep it. You know, keep 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 it locked in. It's hard to do. So you guys got a four Peter so commit to no big body linemen were a priority early on. From now to signing day, what, what kind of positions or priorities do you have to finish off the class? Well, one it'd be interesting because as you go through the end of the season, exactly what do our final numbers end up being? You know, we, we have a small senior class, but we always use the walk on scholarships, because uh, those are kind of one year and those guys earn them back. So what are our exact numbers? Do we get to 20, 21, 22? You know, do you have guys that decide to, to is anybody going to look at the NFL? We'll, we'll next week talk to kids and, and, and we'll go through the process of if anybody wants to, to get their grade, we'll visit with their families and give them a chance to make their decisions. You'll have some fourth year guys that say, hey, I think, you know, maybe I want to graduate. So, uh, you know, we've got a couple guys that have been dealing with injuries. We've had, uh, like this past year was Isaac Griffith or a year before it was Ralston Evans. Uh, we've had, you know, you know, we've had Don Booth, guys that, have, that couldn't play anymore. So what is your final scholarship numbers? We don't know. Um, but down the stretch, we need a quarterback, and we're working hard at that. We need a couple receivers, you know, uh, with what's going on. Uh, I think defensively, you know, we'd still take another D lineman. I think we'd take an offensive tackle possibly. Um, we've got two tight ends maybe, but we're running back. We find the right one. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was a corner or safety in the mix. And we do, we need, two, we do we need two linebackers in this class. We've got uh, one, but we need two more. And so, uh, and at the same time, I don't know who, what you got. Because recruiting, unless it's a mid-year kid, will start Thursday after the convention, January, I think it's the 12th. And then it's hang on till February 1. And it's rock and roll. And um, so, because there'll be a lot of, with, you know, coaching changes and, and coordinator changes and things. And, and out of the blue, just guys come out of the woodwork. So, right now, recruiting has done solid, but we need to hang on. And we need to finish strong, and we expect to do so. What Johnson and Mitchell Page look like they've given you a lot of intangibles in this team more than just what they do on the field. And you know, their last game coming up at home. Well, they're both been really good special team players. You know, Ricky was recognized, uh, you know, had a couple tackles on the kickoff cover team again. Um, uh, Mitchell's back there is our return guy and our hold guy. So, uh, but where they've really been is when they talk to our team, uh, the way they talk about their preparation and the way they play, and then they go out and put it on tape. Those kids play very, very hard. They practice very, very hard. Uh, and it's a joy to watch. Like last week, um, uh, Jacob Bailey was on a scramble block, and he was, he was on his hands and, and, and feet of the old kind of bear crawl thing, going 10 yards fighting and scratching on a Friday practice when it's light because it was a senior knowing he needed to go hard and get ready for this game. And so when you have the visuals of Dan Feeney, and I've always talked about Divine Redding being a good practice player, Mitchell Page and Ricky Jones are two of our best practice players. They're two of our best game players, and they're verbally two of our best leaders. And not only because they're nice with their, with their verbal skills, but they back it up with their actions. They're awesome uh, academically. They're both set to graduate. They're going to be successful. They've been great Hoosiers, and I know they both talked about wanting to finish strong, and they've played well down the stretch. It'd be nice to see how they finish here down the stretch.